Hey everybody, this is Joe Gilder from HomestudioCorner.com and in this video I want to talk to you briefly about the role of EQ in your mixes, specifically how to handle the makeup gain on an EQ. Or if your DAW has some sort of an auto gain function, what's the deal with that and does it matter? And I think it's a hugely important tool and I've started using it in my mixes and it's really, 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 really helpful. So hopefully this video will give you some things to try. Uh, that'll make your EQing even more effective than it already is. So real quickly, let's uh, look into Studio One here. This is Studio One from PreSonus, and let's take a listen to the track we've got pulled up. Okay, so this is a, an upcoming project that I'm will be releasing soon. Uh, it's not even really mixed yet, but uh, I want to take hone in here on the acoustic guitars. So join me. Let's solo these. Just a pair of stereo acoustic, um, two separate passes doubled. And let's just take a listen to that, see what that sounds like by itself. Okay, so this is the stock EQ that comes in Studio One. And if you use Studio One, this will be extra fun for you. If you don't, if you're a Pro Tools user or anything else, th these concepts completely apply. They may be a little bit different depending on how your specific software lines things up and lays out the buttons, but the concepts are the same, so keep listening. So if you followed me for any period of time, you know that I'm a big proponent of subtractive EQ. Meaning, if I want the guitar to be brighter, I'd much rather cut something down here than boost something up here. And I've talked about that a lot, and that's actually not the point of the video today. However, one thing you'll notice is if you do a lot of cuts on a particular track, the overall volume of the track uh, starts to go down, right? Because you're removing volume. So let me just show you what that looks like. Okay, that's a stupid example, but look over here at this meter here and notice how when I disengage the EQ, the signal's a fair amount louder. Okay, so it's it's you can see a little bit of difference on the meter there, and more obviously when you just listen, you can you can tell it's quieter, right? So that can be a problem because as you know, if you're listening to something and doing an A-B comparison, your ears are going to tend to prefer the louder signal uh, than the quieter. And so that can work against you if you're using subtractive EQ because if you start to do some cuts and things like this, and again, I'm exaggerating for the sake of the video, um, then you start to hear, maybe that's the right EQ cut, but because it sounds quieter when you switch things on and off, uh, you can start to kind of trick yourself into thinking you're not helping things. because the other one is so much louder. The solution for that is uh, something that's been in EQs forever is simply a makeup gain. So as you turn things down, you come over to this gain button and just turn it back up to match the volume. So do you hear that? As I'm switching back and forth, I increase the gain of this EQ'd signal by 4.5 dB, uh, which now gets the two signals closer together. So the EQ'd signal and the non-EQ'd signal are very similar in volume versus being very different. Now I can actually compare the two and hear what they sound like uh, side by side at a similar volume. Now the problem with this is nobody wants to do an EQ move and then go adjust this and flip back and forth to make sure they're the same volume. Some EQs give you an input and an output meter, which is nice. You can kind of visually adjust the output gain, but even then it's still a manual adjustment, which is kind of annoying. So if, you, if your system has this auto button right here, I definitely recommend you trying it out. Now if you don't, then you'll have to do it manually and it's still worth doing, uh, but if, it does, if you use Studio One or have a system that does automatic volume control, this is a huge, huge feature. What it essentially does is it disables the gain button or the gain knob, and it makes it to where all adjustments you make are automatically adjusted here. So listen to this uh, guitar as I, as I boost, as I do a big cut, listen to how the volume stays very much the same, uh, even though I'm taking away big pieces of the audio.
Now the same thing happens when I boost. If I do a big boost, it's gonna turn the output down to keep it still at the same volume. See, that's just crazy awesome. Listen to the difference. If I do that again without auto on, and I'm just listening to the, to the track, listen to how the different levels and volume that come out. You hear that? It gets so much louder and quieter, so I'm not really hearing what tonal things are happening to the acoustic guitar because the volume is so dramatically different. So I've set my Studio One to default to always being the auto gain on. So when I'm doing EQ moves, if I'm cutting things, it's boosting it just a little bit, the overall volume, to keep it at the same relative volume. So then I can actually hear if my boosts or cuts are doing anything worthwhile. So go back into your DAW the next time you're at your studio, pull up a track and just play around with this. See if you have an automatic gain uh, feature, or if not, see if it makes sense to you to start using that gain knob to level match your input and your output gains of your EQs. And I promise you, it'll work wonders for you as you're working on a mix. For more tips like this, head over to homestudiocorner.com slash newsletter. Uh, I've got a uh, free ebook that I give away there that's 31 Days to Better Recordings. Lots of great stuff that'll help you get better recordings out of your home studio. And I uh, look forward to you checking it out. Thanks again. We'll see you in the next video. And I can't talk today. Burger, 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 bur